Riding off into the sunset, General Motors says last production of the Chevy Malibu will end in November. The Fairfax assembly plant that builds the Malibu in Kansas City, Kansas, will be reconfigured to build a new generation of the Chevy Bolt EV. GM will soon only sell trucks, SUVs, and its signature sports car, the Corvette. Let's bring in Lauren Fix, automotive expert and founder of Car Coach Reports. Lauren, thank you so much for being here. So you know the Malibu seems to be one of the more affordable sedans. What's the thinking behind this move? Was Chevy stopping production? Is it just a numbers game? And will electric vehicles be in the same price range, do you think? Well, first off, let, let's talk about the Malibu itself. They made over 10 million of them over the full lifespan. Remember that that name goes all the way back to the 60s. So it was a muscle car at one point, and now again became a regular sedan used for a lot of municipalities, a lot of fleets. But because people have sort of shifted to SUVs, and of course the cost of you know leasing these vehicles and renting these vehicles got very expensive and the demand has gone to SUVs and especially in the first quarter of 2024 we've seen a huge push toward low-cost subcompact uh, SUVs for example the Honda HRV the Chevy Trax of the Mazda CX-30 and the Toyota Corolla Cross have all been really really popular consumers want everything they want to be able to transport things haul things and cars just don't do that for everyone any longer although there are cars still available that are selling well and some brands have kept with it general motors said they were going to stop making it and i think going to the bolt ev and the euv which has done really well for them they, they need to get longer range so they're going to put the ultimum battery in it and so i think that's what their plan is is to start the shift even though the sales of electric vehicles are down People are not considering them because of the cost of insurance and the overall cost of owning them. I was going to talk about electric vehicles next. We are seeing a lot of car manufacturers mm -hmm. go electric, but not all consumers might want mm -hmm. that. As you just said, is that a smart move for these car manufacturers to be putting all those resources in it? Well, you know, it's funny this week, Mercedes Benz said, you know what, we're still going to make gasoline powered vehicles. We're going to offer hybrid. We're going to offer electric. You've seen the same thing going with other brands such as Hyundai uh, and also their premium line, which is Genesis. You're seeing that with Kia. Almost every brand has started to realize we can't make this work. Uh, I spoke with an executive at Honda who told me that we know we're not going to be able to go all electric by 2032, but consumers want the Honda Civic. They want cars that are gasoline powered or hybrids like the Prius. And so that's from Toyota. So when you start looking at what consumers are buying, they want the best of both worlds and they're not getting that with electric cars. And so you're starting to see that manufacturers realize we're going to have to pay a lot of fines, but we're going to keep this going because this is what consumers want because we can't sell these electric cars. We're going to go out of business. So obviously you have to do what consumers want. That's what that's what every business does. And with this new change for General Motors and other car manufacturers, how will this change the car industry going forward? Oh, I think you're going to see a lot of, of what we call shrinkage, uh, less models offered by each brand. Brands are lowering their, their options. They're saying you can buy the three different models within this. For example, if you were going to buy um, a Genesis G70, they're going to have two different engines. And then they're going to say we've only got like two trim levels within each one. And the idea is they, they cut down the costs. Uh, this also means less people. And as we're seeing unions coming into play, uh, especially with the Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga, what happens is they're going to go more robotic, which means less jobs, and that's not good for the economy. So we want to see what we can do as far as keeping everything tight, uh, which means making good profits, making smart choices, sharing platforms. For example, the Honda Prologue shares with the Chevy Blazer e EV. So there's a lot of sharing going on, which we didn't see before, and that will help control the total cost for consumers because as cars get more expensive, interest rates increase, and of course, everything getting more expensive, like you were just saying, it kind of leaves consumers with minimal options. Hopefully those prices will stay moderate. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct-to-you savings. 
Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts, or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.